Hello, hello, Jen. It's so nice to have you here today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Teresa. It's a pleasure. So Jen Tyndall owns Art Your Service. And I thought it would be interesting for people to learn a little bit more about her business. She's been working with BACD. But beyond that, um, she's, it's a really cool service. And I know that because of COVID, she's had to change up a whole bunch of things. So I thought it would be interesting to share a little bit about your business and also what you've been able to do with it. So why don't you start by telling us about your business and how you got into it even? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I'll start with BACD as everything does. <laughs> So when no. I first moved to Durham, well, a lot of things, you were very helpful. So when I first moved to Durham back four years ago, three or four years ago, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to work with seniors. And my background is in arts administration from Harborfront Center. So thinking of those two things and that there was a lot of retirement homes here in Durham, I thought, well, maybe I could figure out something, some way to work with seniors. And because art was my focus, I had these grandiose ideas that I could bring in artists and musicians and theater people and writers and all these people into retirement homes in order to like give it a kind of enhancement, a boost of arts, for example. Because a lot of the homes that I went around to had, um, they, weren't, they weren't bad activity calendars, but they could use some enhancements. And there was a lot of bingo. And a lot of things that I thought people don't need to be doing as lifestyle. They can do as entertainment. Yeah. I think, you know, arts are so important, especially in all points of life. But there's so many studies that show that in your late, larger, later points of life, creativity is so important and it's so great for your brain and how you use it going forward. And plus it's amazing where your brain is at when you get when you age and how you can make connections you could never make before artistically. Oh, so right. anyway, I had these grandies various ideas and I um, signed up for your, your accelerating pro program. And you guys made me do market research. <laughs> you look at so, that. Like, that's a boat yeah. Of fun, eh? yeah, that sort of, you know, put a pin in everything. So I called up all these retirement homes and told them about all my ideas in a market research way. And they're like, well, these are, these are fantastic ideas. It's not like we wouldn't want any of this, but we don't have the budget for this. We have like one person and that's their job to do all this stuff. Okay. And maybe we can bring you in once every two months or something, but you're going to burn yourself out trying to do this. Right. So I was like, huh. oh, thanks a lot. So then I was thinking, well, what am I going to do next? And then through my market research, um, I was talking to one head of a retirement home here in Oshawa. And she said to me, you know what you should do is put those ideas in a box and sell them in a box. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sell them in a box. And then did some more market research and realized maybe I should put some stuff in a box. So I started doing that. And I did my first program two years ago called Cultivating Gratitude. And inside were um, six activities that you could use and 10 conversation starters. And what you do is use those for your seniors in order to inspire them to start thinking more positively and to help them naturally feel more happier and content in their lives. Because the great thing about gratitude is that it has all these neuroscience benefits. And so just by thinking of something you feel grateful for makes you feel better. And I thought, well, seniors could help that. And then that's what I took off with. And I came out two years ago, and I've been selling those through, uh, through trade shows and hand-in-hand hand and going into retirement homes, that sort of thing. And that's what I was doing. And I just had a big order coming up, and then COVID hit. Oh, yeah. So, and then plus I had other programs kind of come out, and I had a whole idea what I was going to do. Yeah. And then so suddenly that was put to a halt. Yeah. So, so I started thinking about, other things I could do. Now, another BACD client, uh, Wendy, who's also a good friend of mine and a past harbor fronter, uh, Wendy Vincent, and she's of Wendy Vincent Communications. Her and I did a seniors event at the Robert McLaughlin Gallery last October, and it was a live event, and we had seniors come, we had dancers, we had a curated art talk, and we had all these things, and it was a big event for seniors, and we thought this would be great to do, all around Toronto and we had one set up for Union Station in June even. So we had all these live events thinking, well, this is going to be great. So that would be kind of a compliment to my business as it was going on. And obviously we couldn't have a big event at Union Station in June because, well, we know. So we started thinking of pivoting and it was actually Wendy's idea to think, why don't we do an event online for seniors, which we did and we called it the Golden Hour. And we did it for free and we brought our friends in to help us. And we had people from all across North America joining us for one hour. And it was amazing. And through that, I learned about all the people 
that were being socially isolated in their homes and how desperate they were for stuff to do. Creativity, um, fitness, and just to have people coming in to talk to them and connect, basically. So then I was talking to Teresa here about the golden hour, about what I could do later about it. And then she kind of helped me kind of fill in the gaps and think, well, why don't you do things bigger than that? Maybe it's just not one hour once a month. Maybe it's more than that. Maybe you're using your original idea, which I could not afford, but I could afford now because I was doing it virtually. Full circle around, here we are. So I have, I'm in my third week right now of virtual classes and socials for seniors. And I have two classes a day, five days a week, and it's almost 50 hours of activities a month. And I have facilities coming on board. I have single seniors coming on board. And it's great. I see people every day that have to say that I'm the only person they see until maybe the weekends. Sometimes they see their family, which is amazing too. And I feel such connection with them. And now we're all friends. And we get to explore creative things and fitness things together. Tell us about some of the classes you do. Because, I mean, they're awesome. Like what I've seen. Like I was lucky enough. I've been a yoga teacher on them, um, mm-hmm. you know, so I've had to, I've been teaching chair yoga on them, but I also know that there's other, I just think it's such a fantastic service. Like a lot of our seniors are not necessarily so old that they don't have technology, um, but they're still isolated. Right. Anyway, tell me yeah, about the types of uh, events that you're having or programming. I'd love to know more. Yeah. And be, since the pandemic has made everybody zoom experts, it's amazing how easily, not easily, easy seniors have adapted to it, especially when it's the only way to get connection. Right. So my programs, as I mentioned, every morning at 10.30, there's a fitness class, whether yeah. it be chair yoga with you, for example. I have a natural movement for seniors class, which is just using the strength of your own body so that you can do that in any way um, to whatever your abilities are. And it's a great workout. I do it, I do it along with Devin, and it's a great way to shake everything up and make you feel better. And there's also meditation and I've been learning along with other people how to do that and get quiet, your mind quiet from all the chatter. We also have a Pilates for posture, which is really good. And as soon as I said that, I have to sit up. And um, yeah, we, and this Friday we're doing a Zamba class. So you can do the, the Mambo and the Cha Cha. and awesome. Yeah, so we have great, we're great things coming up. And then, and then you also do tell us about some of the activities as well, because I think I thought there's just no way you can do that virtually, but you've been able to do it, right? Yeah, you mean the creativity ones? Yeah. Yeah, so there's been some great ones. We did a drumming uh, workshop, which was great, with right. Daria. She's in, she's in Bowmanville. Mm-hmm. We did a, um, we have Durham, we have actually have a lot of Durham people. Uh, Durham, Durham's Artist Palette, they come in and they do a Zoom paint and that's great we've learned how to do different uh, techniques through there like the galaxy technique and we learned how to do birch trees yesterday so it's really good and many people have told me they never thought they were artists but now at the since they're at home they've been trying it out and they they love it and they just said i didn't think i could do this and then uh, they can so it's great how do you prepare them to have all the equipment that they need like the canvases and the paints and everything did like does the yeah. instructor have a list that she sends out or that she sends to you and you send out or Yep. So in the cal- I send out the calendar every Friday before the week's classes. And then and in that I say what you need. And they're usually things that you can have, like the basic paints and brushes. Like there's nothing too hardcore. Right. And then if there's anything interesting that you might need, I always try to give as much notice. notice. Yeah, for sure. Right. So there's a lot of opportunity for your business to grow, right? Because you can eventually probably expand to more classes, but also all these facilities all around connecting seniors together. Yeah. Right now, it seems to be senior centers that have been looking towards us and active seniors that are at home. But in November, I plan to start a long-term care stream, and that will be probably more helpful for the retirement homes and long-term mm-hmm. care homes around Durham. Because right now, some of the it's hard to be classes for everybody. And so some people see, do some things, some people do other things. But it'd be um, I think it's going to get to the point where we'll just need to um, have different streams for different abilities. Right. Right, and then have all kinds of things going on. You can have someone managing one of the calendars for you, right? I think yep. there's a lot of opportunity for you in your business. I really do. And I thought it would be interesting to share that with people too so that they know that these are the kinds of up-and-coming services, um, both from a business standpoint, who you've been able to take something that was going to be, number one, you couldn't do it. Number two was like put it in a box 
and then sell those boxes, but you were constrained by the geography and the time that you had, right? So now you've taken those ideas that were in a box and put them into classes that are virtual. So, I mean, I think Brainwave, that's very smart. So I really (laughs) wish and hope that your business takes up well. Tell me how you market yourself and how you get your customers. So a lot of cold calling, cold emailing, and I found that it's the easiest way. And it's almost like you're, you see that little piece of gold and start going after it because you think, oh, okay, so if it worked for them, then maybe that's what will work for someone else. Like, for instance, like I had the senior centers sign on in Scarborough, and I was like, huh, they're really enjoying it. This seems to be working well for them. I should be starting to use that as my focus and start going after that. Right. So I call, email, and that's, what, that's how I figure it out. I try to figure out who could use it now and try to do it that way. Right. But I think there's so many different places to go from and that I'm just kind of trying to stay at one place and then move on. Because I have three faci- three prices. Like I have a facility, which like a senior center would pay for it, which would be $100 a month. And then I have a single senior. So if you're not attached to the senior center or a residence, you would pay $19.99. And then I also have a free one for people on limited budgets, because especially during this time, I don't want anybody not to have access to something that they want. So. Yeah. And then on a Friday, I heard that you have a social. So what, is you, what do you do with the social? So the social is just basically another way to connect with everybody. And uh, it's funny, I just finished object poetry, which I was teaching earlier. And the, the woman there said, they, we'll see you at the party. And that's what they call it, the party at 4 o'clock. And I, what I do is I get uh, different people to do and be a musical guest, and they just come and sing a song or two. Okay. And then um, Clark, who is my partner, he does the trivia. And he does 50s, 60s, and 70s trivia. And it seems to be a hit. We'll name that tune part. And then we have a bit of a chit chat at the end. And then it's just a great way to round off the week. Oh, that is lovely. I appreciate <laughs> appreciate knowing that for sure. So um, so I like that uh, cold calling because everybody thinks we can just do it through social media. But no, you no. really have to pick up the phone. If you know who your customers are, pick up the phone or send an email, particularly now. Most people are behind their emails and on top of them. And I think they're able to answer pretty soon, right? Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, it's interesting. I find it's almost the social media is like your backup. Yeah. So like, you'll talk to them, whatever, and then they'll look you up and then they'll see that you're legitimate. And then you'll see that, oh, she's got a Facebook, she's got a web page, right. she's got right. these things, she's not some weirdo just emailing me out of anywhere. But first you have to tell them what you are and why you can um, help them. And basically... Right. Because it is so fine tuned in my head now that I don't, I'm not shy about doing it. In the beginning, I was because I was, I wasn't sure how much they needed my product, but now I know they do need it, and I'm trying to convince them that they do need it. And so, honestly, each sale will be easier and easier because you know it's working and it's working yeah. for seniors, right? Have you had any seniors give you any testimonials that you can use, or centers give you testimonials? Because I think that will help too, right? To build yep. your business case. Exactly. Yeah, I have, and it's awesome. So now I have um, some testimonials, both from um, the coordinators of a senior center that's using my service, and then also single seniors that are saying they've been enjoying their the art classes or they're enjoying the fitness classes. And a lot of people were used to go to their senior centers for one or the other. Now they're doing both. So they maybe they only went for art classes, but now they're doing fitness. And maybe they only went fitness before. Now they're doing art. So it's really expanding everybody's horizons, which is always nice to see. And I then there was you doing dance lessons would be one. Uh, tri- like charades, um, you know, all things that people like to do. Maybe even uh, card games, right? Playing yeah. card games with each other. I've been because thinking about expansion kind of ideas and that would be like in and, and have like smaller groups which would also help with connections and do things like that sort of thing um you know on zoom you can use breakout rooms right so you yep. can put people in the rooms have them play a game and say okay you're here for half an hour play a game and then come back and then, and then you can put the other two together yeah yes. the whole comp- yeah for sure oh the sky's the limit so what do you love about being in your own business um, lots of things. I like uh, making my own decisions. I like, uh, I find it infinitely interesting how things change every day. <laughs> Where something you would have had no idea was going to happen and all of a sudden it did. And you're just like, wow, I didn't see that was going to happen. And like you, and as I was talking before, you find a little bit of gold and you start yeah. kind of digging that way. And then something else opens up that you had no idea that you're going to turn out that way. I mean, I thought I was going to be selling boxes and now boxes I'm still selling but that's not my main focus right now 
And are you going to keep to those boxes? Like, but are you going to keep yeah. that? Like, that could be a gift for somebody, right? Yeah. But Maybe it doesn't need to be your focus. Yeah, but it's, I, I think there'll be, a, I can have like a store side yeah. bar going along with it, but yeah. this will be my main focus. Because, and, I mean, the, my first senior center just came on and said, and they just sent me an email today saying that they wanted to continue because they were only doing a one month trial. And they said, we want to continue even after COVID. So even when we're completely open, we want to still do it because our seniors are enjoying it so much. Right. So it's great. Yep. I, I think it's a fantastic way of offering programming that doesn't cost a center a lot of money. Let's face it. No. You know, to bring an entertainer in is probably quite a few hundred dollars. And here they're getting all of that and more in one fee, right? So very exactly. cool. Um, another question I have for you, what's your big vision for your business? Um, yeah, I think I see things as an expansion, like like I said, like into clubs and having a long-term care yeah. stream, stuff like that. And then, yeah, scaling as much as I can. I don't know how big it can get without it being top-heavy, because right now I'm really enjoying the intimacy of knowing people when they show up. But that would be something that maybe we do make smaller classes for different things. Like maybe that's what you do like with a community center. You would do that too. You just keep something at 30 classes and then offer it at a different time if it was popular. Or it's just, I think it was one of those things is just it'll be a good problem to have <laughs> when you get there. I can see you doing things like, uh, you know, say your movement teacher, they will come on and actually do it and manage it themselves without you having to be there. And that way you can be in, you know, 50 different, different places, places. Yeah. for the same that's time. True. Yeah. So well, that's always an option for sure. But you just need different Zoom memberships at that point, I think. Yeah, exactly. There'll be a whole bunch of different kinds of things going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jen, I really appreciated talking to you. I, I love what your business is doing, and I really see there a lot of opportunity. It's a, a new way of doing business, so you know, hats off to you for that, and I'm so glad that we had a chance to chat and share that with everybody. So thanks again. Well, thank you, Teresa, and thanks, thanks to you and BACD for helping me get to where I want to be. You guys were a great support and are. It's a pleasure. Thank you.